Oh, welcome to Steve's Retro Loft. Today's the uh, final episode of the uh, random box of games, um, and here it is. Um, it's less random than some of the others because through a process of elimination, um, some of the games I remember I haven't found yet, so hopefully they're going to be in this box. And also I did find a photograph from 10 years ago when I celebrated the Spectrum's 30th anniversary um, of some of the contents which I've yet to see, so I have to assume they're in this box because they're nowhere else. So um, let's have a look um, and we'll see what games are there. Now, so I'm may spread this video out over uh, two just because there's quite a lot of games in here that I want to play but we'll wait and see anyway uh, let's get the box open and um, see if I'm gonna be excited or disappointed okay all right uh, trying to get out the old trusty pen knife as I said um, there's a, quite a few software project games I saw um, there's, I think Jet Set Willy 2, saw two copies of this, Load Runner, Thruster, um, Manic Miner, I think the Bug Bite version, but from, I do, I'm sure I have a couple of versions of the Bug Bite uh, one, so there was a couple of covers, so uh, let's see what's in here. As you can see at the time we uh, obviously shopped at Morrison's, because uh, yeah, lots of Morrison's bags. <coughs> So as well as the pictures uh, of, of the main bag, um, as you can see, TLL or Tornado low levels in there. I did have a, a separate picture of that, and also a separate picture of um, Harrier Attack. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, which I don't think I've seen so far. Um, I think there's a couple of layers in here. So yeah, it's uh, see what we've got. That's the same, isn't it? A couple of copies of Jet Set Willy, so that's always good. I'm sure I saw Jet Set Willy 2 in the picture I had earlier, so it's nice to have two boxes, two copies of each. Because uh, yeah, you never know, might not load. Good old fighter pilot. Um, yeah, nice game. Classic game. Scuba dive and uh, Harrier attack. Yes, yeah, it's, it's been good so far. Um, this is the layer. Actually, looking down at what I can see below, um, that's the layer I, I, I'm aware of. Some of the games I've already got. So, uh, yeah, no, cyclone. Now, I can't remember. That's like a helicopter version of TLL, um, I believe. So. High soft Pascal. Wow. Yes, contact Sam Cruz, yes. Made by the same people who bought us school days, so uh, yep. Oh. Trans Express? Now I do have um oh okay, do have an empty box. Um <clears throat> I do have another one though somewhere, so yep. Let's have a look so uh, TLL. There's a manic miner. Another TLL. Tornado low level for those that aren't aware. And schizoids. Um, can't remember that. Brat Bluff. Nope, another one I can't remember that. World Cup Football. Um, not sure if I. Paxman promotions. I'm not sure if I've played this and it was terrible. Um, but there you go. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Nope, not one I remember. Spawn of Evil. Yeah, another one from the forgettable list. Uh, Nebula. Very basic inlay. Uh, made a couple of those, so uh, yeah, no idea. Monkey Business, which I'm sure is probably um, Donkey Kong, but I couldn't call it that. But we'll wait and see. Uh, the Dungeon Master, now, is that a 3D game or was it an adventure game? Probably an adventure game. Okay. Nomad, uh, yeah. Beachhead, Kong, and Jasper, okay. Right, so what have we got now? Uh, Kai Temple, maybe that should have gone in the cheap box. I do have access to that still, so that might go back in there later. Um, Thrust, can't say I've heard of it. 
Finders Keepers, do remember that, it's quite a good Mastertronic game. Um, everyone's a Wally, excellent. I won't be playing the uh, song, by the way. <coughs> Stargazer Secrets, I'm probably yet another text based adventure. <coughs> Booty, yes. Um, I did try the Commodore 64 version on uh, when I was uh, getting trying that, uh, that device out. Kickboxing, yeah, oh, interesting. 3D Tank Jewel. Hmm. I wonder if it's a bit like Star Glider in terms of graphics, so we'll wait and see. The City, uh, can't say I've ever heard of it. Um, Cauldron 2. I don't recall Cauldron 1, to be honest with you. Let's see what we got here. Now, um, I probably will flash a picture up of this layer, so it's not this isn't going to be a surprise, but uh, Destructo? Destructo? Yeah. Not what I'm aware of. Ah, Katakana Lesson. Oh, okay, so it's, um, yeah. It seems to have some game instructions, but then it also says Katakana Lesson. So, so handy if you want to learn Japanese, or um, whatever this is. So, oh, Ground Attack by uh, Silversoft. Again, this is a game I've never heard of. Uh, 1982. This might not actually even be a Sinclair Spectrum game. It might be a ZX81 game. Um, yeah, it's very, uh, yeah, pass. I'll have to do some research on that, I think. You see the uh, Spectrum Plus version of uh, Horizons. Um, <clears throat> Penetrator, which is quite a good uh, action arcade, scroll, scrolling action arcade game. Centipede, which is uh, probably very much like that. A uh, snake game I uh, tried on the last episode. A <sighs> couple of meteor storms. A couple of chess players. There's a lot of duplicates here. That's probably why I've sorted them out into this uh, box. Three copies of Checkered Flag, because obviously uh, one's never enough. Um, <clears throat> a series of Hoist games. Uh, Hungry Hoist, Hoist Go Ski and Hoist and the Spiders. Uh, a couple of duplicates there. Um, be nice if I had the CDs, uh, the the ROMs of those. So, ah, a couple of Horizons, and a couple of chess games, more chess games. Quite a lot of Sinclair games here. Space Raiders, Space Raiders, uh, which is empty. Okay, um, it's a shame. Flight Sim. Um, I do remember getting this on the Spectrum uh, many, many years ago, and because um, I had it originally on the ZX81, and yeah, I was quite disappointed when I, when I got to the Spectrum version. It was um, yeah, it seemed to be a little bit lacking compared to the excitement of the ZX81. Uh, another copy of Horizons, um, Inca Curse. So it's on the many, many videos, and here's the sort of remainder of some of the software project stuff, apart from a, a copy of Transam. Um, you may be wondering where. Ultimate games are. Um, I do have a drawer full of my ultimate collection, so this was probably just a surplus spare one. So um, that might go on eBay or one of the Spectrum sites on uh, Facebook soon. So we'll wait and see. So uh, another Quicksilver game, uh, Time Gates. Um, not one I remember. Uh, a couple of copies of Jet Set Willy 2. And leave them there with Manic Miner. Um, Astronauts for the uh, Spectrum, yeah, again, not a astronaut, sorry, not a game I remember. Um, push Off, uh, I vaguely remember that game, and I vaguely remember Thruster, um, that was quite good. Um, the final one, this is one I'm interested to see, it's a sealed copy of Load Runner. Now, yeah, this might be the only one in existence. Um, yeah, never opened it. As you can see, it's still got the seal intact. Uh, I do remember the game. I actually quite liked it. It was a very basic graphics, but it was quite addictive. It's quite a nice little game. Um, but yeah, there you go. Um, I might see that on Facebook and on one of the Spectrum groups and uh, see uh, see what people think. Um, because yeah, <laughs> it's it's very rare that you see uh, 35, 40 year old game still sealed. 
Um, so yeah, I, I think that's the lot. Um, I said I'm going to have my uh, a bit of time, yeah, a little bit of a, a difficult time trying to find some games I want to play out of this collection. Um, I might even run up Horizons just for the old uh, sake of things. Uh, um, obviously, this isn't going to get opened, um, obviously, because you know, this sort of game is probably wasn't worth a lot, but it's probably worth a lot more now, um, sealed. So uh, yeah, we'll wait and see, and uh, see what I can uh, see what I can get to load. See you in a bit. As you can see, there's a number of titles here, 18 altogether. Um, what I am going to do is said that it's going to split the video into two. Um, obviously, I'll concentrate on this half uh, first, and then this half in the uh, the second video that I'll uh, I'll do in a, maybe a week's time. Uh, but yeah, they'll uh, see how some of these go. Um, it's a good mixture of stuff here. <coughs> um, some quite uh, basic stuff. I'm guessing is it the Inter Inca Cruise is a text-based game. Contact Sam Cruise is very much like um, School Days, uh, the way it's played. And then just a few other games as well. So uh, I'll get some of these up and running, and um, yeah, we'll have a look. See what see what we can play. This brings it all back. I do remember the uh, this loading screen. Um, it's one of these cassettes you probably loaded once just to have a look, and then most likely never used again. Um, but yeah, it was designed um, at the time for people that didn't have much experience in computers. Um, I was vastly experienced when I got my first Sinclair Spectrum because I was an X81 owner, um, so I knew all about how to, how to use it. But there you go. Um, interesting, they didn't bother clearing the screen because um, it's yeah, it's a bit messy. But I'm sure this is a big Scion logo, so logo, sorry. Um, but we'll uh, see what it is. The tape is, it does seem to be a very large um, capacity cassette, so I'm not sure if it's a case where you load stuff in, stop the tape, play it, and then reload the next uh, section in. Um, it is different on each side, um, but we'll have a look. Um, just, we won't look, go through the whole cassette, we'll just have a quick look at one or two things on it. Stop the tape. It's a basic, um, yeah, basic hardware layout of the computer. So. Yeah, so it's interesting. It's um, yeah, obviously you don't get the the benefit of seeing this sort of a, a presentation anymore about what a computer does. And this really was. You know, a time and a place um, in the past where you know people really didn't know computers; they were scared to touch them. Um, you know, thought they could probably do damage by actually typing the wrong thing on the keyboard. Uh, but yeah, but it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, as I said, I won't go through the uh, entire contents of this tape, but just uh, it's just nice to have a look, quick look and see what it did. One of the first lessons on the uh, Horizons cassette is a uh, keyboard trainer. Um, yeah, so see... Oh, obviously I got that wrong. I should have pressed A key to continue, not any key. Do not press break. Okay. Tells me it's probably a basic program then. Um, yeah, um, I, I say I won't go through this. It, it, it's one of those things that uh, if you've owned a Spectrum, you know about the various different modes, the extended modes and typewriter modes and using the various different uh, keys. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting. Well, move on from Horizons. Um, the tape seems to have stiffened up a little bit and so this little port. This uh, Walkman's not really great at uh, stiff tapes. I do have a cassette recorder, so a cassette player somewhere, um, but I'm not sure it's in a box somewhere. I'll have to uh, dig it out at some point. But uh, anyway, time to uh, move on to something else. I'll try uh, push off now. Um, I think I remember the game, um, but we'll wait and see. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Now that seems to be it for push off. Um, it's a yeah, very squeaky, very squeaky tape. Um, so yeah, I think I might have to move on to something else. Unfortunately, that's a very quick uh, look at Meteor Storm because this didn't load. But I do have two versions of this, so I shall go and dig the other one out and see what it does. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Not sure what that does. Yeah, that's for its hyperspace. Oh, okay. Yeah. I forget the name of the game it's based on, um, but yeah, it seems to be quite a nice little conversion, a uh, nice little version of the game. Um, yeah, I'm not going to play too much on it because it's uh, yeah, it's not really that controllable on the uh, keys. Uh, it seems to be a little bit sensitive, but I'll I'll fire a penetrator next and uh, see what that's like. Right, uh, now it's loaded. Um, I do remember some sort of fireworks effect when you start, so I'm not sure if that was automatic or you had to press a key, so here goes. It might have crashed or it might just be waiting for a key press. Nope, there you go. Fireworks. Doesn't look nice. <sighs> Time to get a little bit further. Stage two, anyway. Um, yeah, it's quite a quite a nice game. It um, doesn't help that I'm terrible at these sort of games, but uh, there you go. Well, I shall have a look at Flight Simulator next. Um, yeah, and uh, see how that goes. Right, so have a look. I'm um, going to keep the instructions out for this because there's uh, quite a few keys to remember. Uh, <coughs> do excuse the noise. Um, the excitement that I thought was the bin men actually turns out to be some scaffolders. So uh, uh, they're putting up some scaffolding for my uh, neighbour who's having a new roof. So, so look, controls, control, perhaps, yeah. Uh, what do you reckon? Um, I'll go for final approach. It's always a bit exciting. Landing's always fun. No, no wind of X. Not the nice steady approach I think everyone wants. And pull up. Yeah. Yes, um, yes, I gathered that. Um, and that ends my career as a pilot. Right, next up we'll uh, try contact Sam Cruz. As I said, the game's um, play, the game style is very much the same as uh, School Days, because yeah, it's the same company that made it. Um, I can't remember the game too much. Obviously, it's a, you know, it's a Sam Cruz, it's a detective agency, so yeah, there's puzzles to solve and whatever. I'm going to have a quick, uh, hopefully, a quick run of it. And uh, yeah, see where we go with it. So, I'll, sure. Right, so Sam Cruise loaded. Um, I actually had a problem with the uh, the original Sinclair cassette lead. I moved the Spectrum slightly forward, and then the wires broke in it. Uh, it seemed to go deaf. So whether there's something a temporary glitch on the Spectrum or this cable, I don't know. But I've gone switched to a uh, spare cable I had. Uh, that's a stereo cable, but it doesn't really matter. So anyway, so the press a key. Okay. 
But the one frustration I had with this game, obviously, I believe there's a set of stairs here. So, I can't remember how you get down. <laughs> that might have improved the game it would be is when you went into the property um the walls disappeared and uh, the you know the game would have appeared like school days it would have been nice if that happened whether there's an option to do that i don't know um no Well, there you go, that's a quick look at Sam Cruise, um, or contact Sam Cruise. Um, Marcus Fair had a, a number of good games. This is, yeah, again, it's one of those ones that I, I did remember playing. Um, I said I just wish the actual uh, format of the uh, game was a little bit better, a bit easier to uh, easier to read, um, or easier to see where you were going. Uh, but they also did both the School Days games, and they did a, a Wheelie, I believe. Um, yeah, I think they did Wheelie, which is a, another cracking game. Uh, and there was also a... Uh, so I've got a 3D helicopters type game as well, which they did, um, which I believe used quite a lot of vector graphics. So it's a yeah, they're a good little software house. One of these um, underrated uh, companies when yeah, you know, <coughs> yeah, Ultimate Ocean, Imagine, you know, those are the big big companies always got um, you know a lot of the press. Whereas Microsoft always managed to produce you know some sort of good compelling games, and I believe it's only a man and wife uh, operation. Um, so I think he did all the coding and. <coughs> I think she did all the data inputs, if I remember back at the time uh, uh, from a crash interview I read. But uh, yeah, yeah, next one. I'll move on to Ink Cruise. Um, it's probably a text based adventure uh, for, did it say for 48k or 16? Uh, 48k, so uh, although the cassette, the actual tape looks very small, and 1981, so it's going interesting. So I'll have a quick look and see what that does. Right, so it is a text-based adventure, Inca Curse. Um, now, last time I did one of these, I didn't read it properly, and so uh, blah 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 blah. Your aim is to get out as much treasure as you can. Don't let greed be your for Your adventure is complete when you return to the jungle, clearing with treasure. Okay. This is one of the frustrations I have with text-based adventure games. I guess a lot of it's all in your mind. Uh, I am on the temple steps. Exits are the north. You know, I've just come from the, there, so I can also see a large latched door up the steps. Right, yeah, as I said, that with um, with, with a lot of text-based uh, games, it's not really something to have a look at on the video. Um, it might be quite addictive. It might be a nice little game, Inca Curse, but um, at the moment, for the purpose of this video, it's not really doing it for anybody. So, um, Harrier Attack it is. Right, it's, uh, it's loaded up quite well. We got it quite quickly. It's a 16k game, um, yeah, and so it's quite good. It's a typical sideward scrolling um, sort of game, so uh, it's not too. Yeah, it's, it's not too groundbreaking what it is. Obviously, a um, couple of years after the Falklands War, Harriers were probably still very much in uh, everyone's mind. So, uh, yeah, why not produce a game? So, so we've got uh, missiles and bombs. Oops. I don't think well, we're missing actually pretty much every target. <coughs> I'm 
sure they are. I've had awards for the most ineffectual bombing campaign, but I think I might be winning it. There's quite a certain level of multitasking, actually. It's, um, it can be, yeah, it's not tricky, but so it's just learning to fire one thing and then, yeah, controlling it, and it's just like being a real pilot. There you go, it's a, a quick look at how we attack. Uh, as I said, I'm not going to spend too much too long on these games. Um, another aircraft now, a tornado low level. Uh, this is a, a sort of a, no, it's sort of a 3D isometric simulated game, uh, from what I remember. Um, it's quite good, it's quite fast, um, as well. So, it's a again, it's a, from a series of, from a so, yeah, software company Vortex that made a few good games, and uh, you tend not to hear too much about them. But uh, hopefully, this will load. Um, I've got a couple of copies if it doesn't, so uh, we'll see what happens. Right, it's nice when a uh, game loads. Uh, controls seem to be relatively simple. Take off a map, M for map, so yeah. Keyboard. You have to hit those maps to do something with them. I think you have to just sweep over the targets as low as you possibly could, if I remember right. To watch it. You, can't, you can't really take your off screen because you can hover over most things, but then you'll find that those sort of almost like transmitter, those are big aerials that uh, tend to hit, get you. There you go, it's a quick look at uh, Tornado at a level. Um, it's quite a nice, quite a nice little game. Um, yeah. I'm so quite happy with the uh, first selection of games I tried. As I said, there's there's another nine games or another nine cassettes I'll have a look at loading um, uh, for part two of this video. I don't want to do them all in one because otherwise it'd be almost well over an hour and I know yeah people don't like watching things for more than 10 or 15 minutes so uh, um, yeah we'll hopefully have a bit more success with the next lot as well. That's it for part one of this uh, box of games opening. Uh, so I've split it into two because there's quite a few games to go through. So um, hopefully I'll try and get the other video done in a couple of weeks and until next time um, I hope to see you soon. Okay bye bye.